This sort of problem shows up all the time in engineering physics class. There will often be variations or additions, but some of these basics are worth looking into. So here we've got set up just a block on an incline. We're not going to make it a frictionless incline. The incline is going to be an angle alpha above the horizontal. So it's asking us to find the magnitudes and directions of the forces. First thing we do is make a free body diagram. The forces that we can identify on the object as it's drawn are the normal force, which is perpendicular, normal, to the incline, friction, which is going to be parallel to the incline, and the weight of the object, which is going to be vertically down. I haven't shown a coordinate system. We'll put that in later. But it'll be useful to break down the weight into components that are perpendicular to the ramp and parallel to the ramp. So I've shown that as weight perpendicular and weight parallel. The friction, notice here, I've shown the friction is going uphill. This will be the case if the object is sliding downhill or if it's holding still on the incline. If your object is sliding uphill or being pulled uphill or something like that, then friction would be a force that goes downhill. But the friction is always parallel to the ramp. The normal force is always perpendicular. First thing that often flummoxes students is how to find the components of the weight that are parallel and perpendicular to the ramp. So I'll show you some easy ways to remember what angle is what. The ramp is at an angle alpha above horizontal, so I've drawn a horizontal line in here for reference. And here's the ramp at an angle alpha. The parallel component of weight drawn down here, perpendicular component down here. We've set up this right triangle then to show the components of weight in these two directions. How do I know this angle is alpha here? To, I'm claiming this is the same angle alpha as the ramp makes to the horizontal, and so this is an angle to the vertical. How do we know that? Here's a good way to prove that to yourself. Since this component here is perpendicular to the ramp, and this angle is alpha, this angle must be complementary to it, so it must be 90 minus alpha. Now we've got another angle between the horizontal and the vector w, which is the direction of the weight. This angle here is 90 minus alpha, so this angle must be complementary to it. What's complementary to 90 minus alpha? Why, it's alpha. So this angle at the apex of this triangle must be alpha. This angle is 90 minus alpha. So then I'll redraw this triangle a little bit bigger so we can see it. I just moved a little bit. So we've got alpha at this corner, w on the hypotenuse, w parallel on this side, and w perpendicular on this side. So we can see that the sine of alpha is going to be w parallel divided by w, or w parallel is going to be w times the sine of alpha. The cosine of alpha will be defined as w perpendicular divided by alpha, so w perpendicular is going to be w cosine alpha. So w cosine alpha goes here, w sine alpha goes here. Some things we know from the conditions of our system. The magnitude of the weight is mg, the direction is vertically down. We don't know that this is necessarily a statics problem. It doesn't have to be. But one thing we do know is the perpendicular forces are zero. That's what we've shown here. That basically means that it's not going to be accelerating away from the ramp. It'll either go up or down the ramp, but it's not going to go into the surface of the ramp or away from the surface. It's going to stay on the ramp. So at least then we can write components of our forces in the normal direction, perpendicular to the ramp, and know that they're all going to add up to zero. The other thing we know, once we found the normal force, which is perpendicular to the ramp, we can find the magnitude of the friction force, which is going to be mu, the coefficient of friction, a dimensionless number, times the magnitude of the normal force. This does not tell us the direction of the force of friction. This just tells us the magnitude. We have to figure out the direction of the force of friction from other characteristics of the problem. We have to find that out from context. What I'm going to do now is actually take the step to find incline coordinates. So I've set up the coordinate axis here. I'm setting up y as the direction perpendicular to the ramp going up away from the ramp, and x as parallel to the ramp, which is going to be pointing uphill in this case. We didn't have to do this. It makes sense to make components that are inclined so that one direction is parallel to the ramp, one direction is perpendicular to the ramp. It doesn't really matter what you call them or which way they point, uphill, downhill, away from the ramp, into the ramp. The weight, which is the x component, the parallel component, is going to be downhill, so it's going to be negative, mg sine alpha. The y component is also going to be down into the ramp, so that'll be negative as well, mg cosine alpha. Since there's no other force in the y direction, 
the normal force has to completely cancel the normal component of weight, and so that will be plus mg cosine alpha, pointing in the plus y direction, obviously. Force of friction, as we've drawn it, is uphill. That doesn't have to be the case, but we've drawn it that way. So as we drew it, it would be plus mu mg cosine alpha. If we're pulling the object uphill or if it's sliding uphill or something like that, then that force of friction could be downhill. The direction is contingent on the context of the situation.